Alright, we're good. Shh. Pick your pop up. We tuned up time? I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Thank you. 
We shall see the king. Amen. <laughs> There's a better kind of coming It may be evening, morning, I don't care. The wake of the bride is not with the truth. But we shall see the king. 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 It's coming in the power. The hill is fresh and powerful.
You're lucky you're not wearing a tie. Why? You didn't preach. Oh. We had a morning service yesterday. They were packed. It's a pat. They said, they said, they said, they said, only preach for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Arise and sing. Children of Zion. The Lord has been on the table. Arise. Thank you. 
Oh, 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 oh,
sermon but I didn't do it. And they said that they came to me and I said, you know, Jan would probably laugh at the whole memorial. She probably would have. <laughs> because I'm not a, I, you know, I don't take, I don't have notes. I speak from my heart. I speak from what, whatever's on God's given my mind, that's what I speak on. I, I don't I don't have canned sermons. I don't do any of that stuff. I never have. There's only been a, one or two times in my life where God told me to write these things down and speak them. I said, Ooh, yeah. And people were shocked. <laughs> but 
this lady, this young girl, she was 40, she had two children, and she told me, she was instructing them outside to behave yourself in church, because they'd never been to church before. And I told her, I said, you know what, this is a family thing, you know, every once in a while I have to pick up my two-year-old granddaughter and preach with her moms. So we're not, you know, we don't have church like that. Our churches, we want people to feel free. We want people to feel happy. We want people to be blessed. We want the joy of the Lord's our strength. And a love said to me, we've never been to a memorial service like that ever before. I said, first off, I knew Jan. It makes a big difference when you know somebody. And I knew that she's in heaven. Ain't nothing worse than doing a memorial service with somebody that you know. He burned it in hell. And that's why there's been a few times where I didn't say anything, but Don did a great job. I can not Don, I mean, you, you impressed the little bit of you, brother. You did a great job. I could have done better. I could not work short enough when you say But you know what? Like, it's a time to remember, you know, people. And it was, uh, I couldn't believe that how many people. You know, I told Tom afterwards, as you know, I just felt led to let people speak. And he said, yeah, you did the right thing. Hmm? There have only been a few times where I've made, I, I, I'm going to give you wisdom from Tom. He, Tom told me, Here's, Dad, I've learned from everything you've done wrong. I'm not, not doing those things. I'm wisdom, because I did a lot of things wrong. And if you learn from somebody's mistakes, you're a wiser person. Amen? But if you have your Bibles this morning at St. John, the fifth chapter, how do you know we have power? And a lot of times, a lot of people think that our power is a firecracker, but really it's dynamite. And some people have C4. I don't even know what that was. And, but yet, so many people don't know, how many know this would be safe to give me a stick of dynamite? I don't know how to handle it. I wasn't trained. You know, it takes a special person, an expert they call him, because you know how many know that if it goes off, he's no longer an expert. <laughs> you have to be an expert to handle explosives. And we have an explosiveness in our lives. But God trains us how to handle explosive properly. Because uh, uh, the Bible says... Uh, we use the word power, is dunamis. Actually, that, that word comes also from dynamite. <laughs> that type of power is dynamic power. And Jesus showed us and taught us how to use that power in a proper way. I love watching those uh, shows where they blow up buildings, they come down to each other. And how they meticulously know every word that thing dropped first, and this let's go this way. They have special explosives as charges, so it, it, everything has to fall right, or it's a mess. And I love how those guys go through everything and how they, you know, got a computer programming. It has to fall just right. And these people, years of training to understand the dynamics of explosives, the dynamics of things that brings things down or builds things up. How many know you can build things or destroy things? Amen. Same power. And the same thing with the Lord. You can use His power to destroy, and a lot have. But then you also can use His power to build, which God intended us to do. In John, the fifth chapter, we're going to start the 19th verse. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will, or makes alive. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And all men should honor our 
the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father, which has sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believe on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself, and hath given unto him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which shall all those of that are in the grave shall hear his voice. And shall come forth they that have done good unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father with that sent me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we come to you. Knowing that, Lord, you are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. All things, all things give you to the glory and you praise. And let this word echo into our lives and move us into the power that we desire in thee, Lord. Not our own will, but the will of the Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Always remember when you're reading the New Testament, especially Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that Jesus was under the bondage of the law. How many know that? A lot of people don't understand when he's speaking, he's speaking forth of the law. Until his resurrection, that new covenant started. But Jesus walked in the old covenant. He walked in the way. So when he spoke, he was speaking to people who understood the old covenant. Sometimes people get really weird mixed up at this. And you've got to put everything in its context. Who is Jesus speaking to? Why is he speaking it? Under what circumstances is he trying to ex uh, explain or illustrate something? And here... The Jewish people the, were, were prosecuting or, or trying to slam Jesus because what his disciples were doing on the Sabbath day. It says, the, the, therefore, the Jews sought, the atheist, and therefore the Jews sought the Lord to kill him. Because he had not, because he had only not only broken the Sabbath, but said he was also that God was his father, making him equal with God. Wow. Wow. The problem is Jesus came and threatened their authority. Because see, their authority was Moses. But Christ came to reveal the authority of the Father of Moses. <laughs> and the Father of all things. And they didn't like it. It was different. It wasn't quite right. It didn't fit their criteria. And how am I going to make money on this? You know, if you read the story of Tesla, not the car, the man, when he built that power station in New York, on Niagara Falls, Westinghouse looked at him and says, oh, this is great. When can we put the meter on it? Mm -hmm. He goes, what do you mean? This is power for free. This is free power for all. No, it ain't. We got to put a meter on it. Because what good is it if it's not making me no money? Why should I invest my money if I can't get nothing out of it? That is man theology. And that is the Christian church theology. We've got to put a meter on this Holy Ghost. If we don't, we ain't going to make no money. Well, how do you put the meter on the Holy Ghost because if you let it run free? Uh oh, what's going to happen? We're not going to get people in church. We're not going to have things to do. We're, I'm not going to be able to... You know what I'm saying? And this is the theology of church today. Got to put a meter on that thing. So we make money. 
Jesus did not come to put a meter on the Holy Ghost. He came to set you free. The power of God is free. It doesn't need to be metered. But you can't put you know, money in it. I preached this sermon before to a bunch of preachers, and they did not go over well with them. Because they have the same theology. It's taught in Bible colleges. It's taught that we're professionals, and as professionals, we deserve professional money. And I heard that some 30-some years ago, and I said, you people are crazy. Why are you being pastor? Why don't you be a psychologist, a counselor? Do something else. Because if God tells you to go to a place, you better go. And it might not be all that pleasant. How many know I've been to some very unpleasant places God told me to go to? But I went. Why? Because I was told to go. No. And it says, Jesus goes, the very I say to you, the Son can do nothing of Himself. Amen. We can do nothing for ourselves. But what He sees the Father do, here's the, here's, here's the source of it. He that had an ear to hear what the Spirit says to the church. He's given us the eyes of the Father through Christ Jesus. And that power comes through the Holy Spirit, those three in one. You can't separate them. Amen? Because they work together in unison. Unison. Yeah, unison. And as we understand that we are the manifestation of the Father in Christ Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. And no meter on it. But that comes with understanding. That comes with understanding and being an expert. How do you become an expert in Christ? Read this. Amen? Read this. I'm pretty sure even at 63, still at 63, if I worked out really hard, amen, and ate right, I'd probably get my muscles back here, like Ralph's. Amen. I see him on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> but to keep that, what do you got to do, Brother Ralph? Just keep doing it. Because what happens if you, I'll show what happens when you stop doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. It's natural. Amen? Amen? If you quit praying, if you can't read the word of God, if you quit seeking him, amen, you will get off on the wrong path. And it might seem like a good path. A lot of people on that path. Hey, a lot of my friends there. <laughs> Problem is, wide is the way, and many is destruction. Narrow is the way, and few found there. You got to keep your eye on Jesus. Amen. You got to stay to yourself. Am I doing what the Father has requested? How many know? I believe that the God the Father is very important. A lot of church are. I've been in church where Jesus only churches. And you know, I, I, I agree with you. But I also have to understand that that, that the Father, <laughs> amen. Is also a vital part of these things. But Jesus only people, they're a little weird. You know, you're a little off a little bit. You're right there. You know? They're right there a little bit. You know, because you know, they like to pick and choose the word of God according to their, their theology. And I tell people all the time, if a somebody off the street who desired God in their life and read this without anybody instructing him except the Holy Spirit. He believe in faith. Amen? Amen? Because we take the word for what it says. We let the Holy Spirit lead us. We're not saying to have men direct us in what we believe to be true. I'm not having men say that to me. Whoa, we believe this to be true. You can be truly wrong. What does this what does the word say? I have been, through the years, 
have been told to my face by many ministers who are a lot older than I am at that, at that time, then your problem is, I love it when they say that, your problem is you're too spiritual. Too spiritual. What you believe people should be is impossible for them to be. So they tried to team me up with other ministers who were, you know, running at 50%. And it didn't work out really well. Because I believe that God has given us all things. We have overcome all things. Not some things. All things. We have that manifestation of power. We got religion way too much mixed up with Christianity. We need to separate those two. They don't mix. Because once you, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power of. But that power comes at a cost. And I, I praise God that there are different places that we all walk in Christ. Some call the apostles. Some evangelists. Some pastors. Some teachers. Amen? The miss prophets? I am. Prophets too. But I haven't heard a really true one in a long time. But hey, I'm open. Can't wait to see one. I always throw it. it can lie. When, when people tell me they're prophets, I always tell them, what is it? Prophesy. <laughs> what do you see? Well, it doesn't work that way. Yes, it does. You see all things all the time. You cannot shut it off. It drives most people crazy. That's why they got to pray in tongues. Because you don't, you go crazy. Tongues are very important and not a part of Christian growth. If you want to have that kind of power, you want that kind of authority, you want that kind of grace, you want that kind of uh, uh, thing in your life, it takes power. It, it, takes, it, it takes exercise. It takes knowing, for the Father loveth the Son. How many know God loves you? And shows Him all things that Himself doeth. The Father wants to see you do the things that glorify Him. Listen, sometimes God answered my prayers and I was shocked a little later to death. Shocked me that He answered that prayer. You know, one of those off the cuff prayers you pray that you, yeah, you really don't mean it, but you know, you're going to pray on the other one. He does it. Well, oh, well, I should put a little effort in that one. And then you pray. You do the dance, you do the shout, you do everything else, and nothing happens. I know one thing. God don't care about the dance. God don't care about the shout. God cares about the faith as a grain of mustard seed. God cares about it. And I tell you, I've been to some churches where they were dancing and shouting and carrying on. I thought it was in Africa. Because they were trying to bring the glory of God down. How many know it's already... Come down. You gotta know this in you, let it come out. And the pastor came to me and said, What do you think of my church? I said, Well, you know, you gotta quit this dancing and shouting. God, he can hear you. Fine. You don't need to shout him down. Just let him go. Release him. Take the veil from your heart. Open up and let that Shekinah glory out. I've seen the Sakana glory. I've seen that in person several times in my life and sometimes in my ministry. And I'm going to tell you something, there ain't nothing like it. It goes on and says, For the Father raised up the dead and quickened made them alive. Them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Other words, that word quicken means he's going to make you alive. You were dead, but now he's going to make you alive. You were dead to all these things, but now you're going to see things differently. When Jesus comes into your life, you're going to see things differently. I, did, I really don't like the year. Uh, uh, I, I, I mean, so glad when November comes and all those campaign ads are off TV. I'm going to tell you, sometimes I get righteous indignation over it. Vote for me. I'm going to save the world. Well, you got a Jesus complex? Excuse me. He already saved the world. He don't need you. Think of their money. 
can sway people. I'm going to thank God that crazy man had dropped out of the race yesterday. I guess he found out he can't save the world. I'm <laughs> sorry, Mr. Totem. Who? Ain't going to happen, dude. In 12 years, John Sider. Oh, oh, good. Yes, yeah. he dropped out. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. You can praise God for that. Thank you, Lord. You have mercy on us all. Another crazy one bites the dust. But who do men think they are? I can do it all by myself. I don't need God. Well, without God, this earth is going to be destroyed in 12 years. Oh, it's sustainable. That's what you say. But see, my God can walk on the water. My God can stand up and say, peace be still. My God controls all things. They, for some strange reason, again, fear controls people. Fear motivates people. If you don't live the word for God, you're going to hell. Well, it might be true. But you know what? I'd much rather tell people how to get to heaven than how to go to hell. Going to hell is easy. You just forsake God and walk the other way. That's easy. You get fat and lazy. They don't care. Going to heaven and doing what God... They made, they, the Christian world has made Christianity way too simple. I just believe in God. You're fine. Oh man, can I still, can I still? No, you, no, you can't still live that way. Come out from among them. Separate yourself. You're peculiar people. You're a holy priesthood. You're a priesthood under me. You got to separate yourself from this world and do according to what God tells you to do. But to do that, you got to first come. Out. You know, I'm gonna tell you, I've been in so many churches where the pastors, every stand up, we're all going to ask the Lord to come into your life. What? Well, that's the mouth. It has to go from here to here, which is some what eighteen inches, or something like that. Because if you're just mouthing it, it don't make no difference. It's like getting baptized. You just getting wet. I know because I got a lot of people wet before and held them down because they were just getting wet. I want you to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know who you are and what you stand for. I want to know who the power of God is making us uh, move us and and. and bringing us to that place where we don't have to fear. He has not given the spirit of what? Fear. But a sound mind. But people say, you're crazy. No. No. You haven't lived long enough. Our society, how do you get to be your seven and be that stupid? You know, most of these Democrat people running for they're in their seventies. They're old rich men who they hate. Right. We're against rich men. <laughs> Look in the mirror, dude. You hypocrite. People will believe anything but the truth. Somebody listed all the fear throughout the years, back from the 60s, all the fears. It was a long list. None of them came to pass. None of them. None of them. But yet they always have fear, 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 fear. Fear controls you. Fear motivates you. Fear will get you going what you what they want you to do. But we have no fear. Well, yeah, we are fearless in Christ. What are you going to do, kill me? Had a guy say, when you preach like that, Pastor Dan, they're going to kill you. I said, it's already dead. Died with Christ many years ago. I'm ready to go now. Yes, I've had people come into my church with guns. Ready to kill me. Wanted to shoot me dead. Because I told their, their, their wife, leave this bum. If he slaps you around beat you, leave him. And that come with wanting to shoot me. Instead, he got filled with the Holy Ghost and got his life straightened out. What I, I I know I'm gonna say this again. Pastors with bodyguards? Really? Really? Guns? Bodyguards? You so afraid? He should be the first one to stop the bullets. Amen? Shoot me. See what happens to you. I believe that gun will explode right in your head and kill you dead. And you have to answer to God. There is no more fear of God. There's no more shame. Jerry Springer says, Trump is destroying the moral fabric of our country. What a joke. Dude, I've seen your show. Yeah, yeah. That ship sailed. 
I saw a little bit of the Democratic Party uh, debate. I thought it should have been on Comedy Central. Ooh, ooh, Mr. Kyle, Mr. Kyle. Couldn't believe that. You gotta be old to know who Mr. Kyle is, right? <laughs> That's what it sounded like. Ooh, 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 pick me, pick me. I'm like, oh my Lord. Have we come to this in this country? They have no shame, no integrity, no nothing. Except, ooh, ooh, ooh. And a bunch of monkeys up there. But the fear mongering has always been among us, always with us. But those that are standing in Christ, we stand and understand that I stand in the Father through Christ Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit. And I see all things out of the eye, and I'm going to do what God tells me to do and not need more than else. Because today will be a day that we're going to raise up and not be dead to these things no more, but alive. There's one guy on Facebook who was talking about how could Christians vote for Trump? How? And he went through the whole line of stuff that Trump has done over the years. And a guy responded and says, because we forgive him daily. What about you? We know he's not perfect. Who is? Oh, that was Obama. The perfect Christ. I'm tasting that was that was eight years of had a lot of Christians praying. A lot of people praying. But God had the last laugh. Put Trump in. And I told everybody, he's going to get president, and he's going to be the most entertaining president we ever had in our life. And I am not, he has not filled with my prophecy yet. He's entertaining as all get out. But is he perfect? No. Neither am I. Thank God I'm not the president. <laughs> but the only thing we have life oh, in God. is in Christ. He's a giver of life and truth. And I'm telling you something. I'm a student of religious history. I love religious history. I know every aspect of, of it, all the way from the 1700s and farther all the way to today. And most of the old guard are gone. Reinhard Monkey was the last of them, I'll tell you right now. He was the last of them. Of the great ones. But there comes that time when the road goes into the darkness. And then God raises up men and women who say, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God endows them with power that they've never seen before. And we're coming to that time. We have homosexual running for president. Can we get any darker than that? I don't know. That's pretty dark. In the eyes of God. But when the dark comes, throughout history, he raises up a people who have not bowed their knee to Baal. He raises up a people that are not afraid to stand and say, Hey, the righteousness of God brings forth truth. And it will cut them to the heart. And they will be offended. But they also know that this is the last revival that's coming. I believe that the church is going to be taken at the midst of the greatest revival the world has ever seen. And they're going to be gone. And all the others will be so relieved that we're gone. They don't even care why we went or how we went or who took us. This is going to relieve that these crazy God people are gone. And Scientology will still be there. The mothership did not pick them up. You know, they believe that. That there's a big spaceship out there. And those alien spirits are born into, uh, into uh, humans. And then at a certain time, this mothership's going to take them all. Well, they're going to stay and we're going to be gone. Because, see, I think the Trump the Lord is only going to be heard for those who have an ear to hear. I don't think that Trump is going to be heard by no one except us who hear. But God is God and he's a great God. No other God besides him. Let's stand. We're going to pray. I know when I'm running out of gas. You're sputtering in my engine.
Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We pray right now for Pastor Dave, Lord, as you bring strength unto him, as you encourage him, Lord. God, as you speak unto him, Lord. God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for your healing power. We thank you for your strength. And we thank you for all things according to your word. Lord, it's not who we are, Lord, but it's who you are. It's not our word, Lord, but it's your word. And, Lord, your word cannot lie. And, Lord, your word is true. And, Lord, I thank you, Father, for your word that empowers us and brings us to that place of your joy. And Lord, we pray for some financial burdens here, Lord, need to be lifted. And Lord, when there is no other way, you make a way where there is no other way. And Lord, we thank you, Father, for that. And Lord, God, we pray protection over our, our lives and our land. And Lord, we just thank you, Father, that we come in your name. We come in your name. No other name in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you praise and glory. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we all said, Amen. Amen. Love one another.